My name is Lisa Goddard and I am currently the director of the International Research Institute for Climate and Society. I'm also a senior research scientist with the IRI and my research interests are in climate variability from the next month to the next decade and our ability to predict it. So I believe it's important to recognize both climate variability and climate change because what you can do about those things differs. We experience them together so we have variability in the climate system naturally. We've had it since the climate system has existed and it will continue to go on. But now we have man-made climate change. And so that's changing now some of the, the thresholds of say heat waves or droughts, um, things that really impact society. So when people are interested in knowing about how climate change is going to affect them, it's going to be really realized through these events of climate variability, which climate change may make worse. The IRI has been innovating in the area of climate-based index insurance for smallholder farmers, starting in Ethiopia, and it's really grown quite fast. For a long time, it was thought that you couldn't provide insurance to smallholder farmers because the typical way insurance is dealt with is if there's a claim, then someone has to go out and actually verify that crops are lost or whatever it is, and that would just be too much work, just too onerous for, say, a developing country and smallholder farmers. But if you can identify some aspect of the climate, say drought, that we know is going to have a fairly large spatial scale and is going to affect any farmer who is reliant on the water in the rainy season, then that can become the trigger for insurance payouts with the assumption that with that level of drought, that typically leads to poor yields across farming communities in the region. So this has turned out to be very desirable by the farmers, and it's also turned out to be quite doable by insurance companies and banks. The type of weather information you might need to implement index insurance is primarily monitoring right now. That's actually a little more difficult than it sounds because no observational analysis is perfect. Most developing countries don't have sufficient gauge networks and satellites have their errors. And so often it's, it's triangulated that we're using several data sources on the rainfall, on the vegetation, and as well on, on local experience to identify whether or not those thresholds have actually been met or exceeded. So the IRI has been working with the World Food Program for some years now. And in 2015, we had a conversation with one of their divisions about how we might bring forecast information into the work that they do. In the humanitarian community, the way that disasters are typically handled is once the disaster or the crisis occurs, then they can take those reports to the donors and appeal for, for funds and for other aid to come and help those communities. The idea with forecast-based financing is if a forecast suggests a sufficiently high confidence of whatever disaster has been identified to occur, it could be a tropical cyclone, it could be drought, it could be heat waves, anything that might affect the, the food and its delivery in that region, forecast-based financing will release funds ahead of the disaster so that communities can prepare. This needs to be developed in consultation with the humanitarian organization, so World Food Program in this case, because they are the ones who can identify what is their cost-benefit ratio. So if you're saving money by preparing instead of reacting, you still have to recognize that some years you're gonna prepare the disaster doesn't happen. So what is that right balance that you can act on probabilistic information and still come out ahead? So I'll be talking more about these things at the American Geophysical Union meeting next week. Uh, my, the session that I'm speaking in is a union session called Building a More Resilient Society. And I hope to see you there.